All right, so we're up and at them early this morning. Uh, actually, a couple of weeks ago, I went and looked at this car. Uh, it belonged uh, to a gentleman that uh, passed away about a year ago, and his family is finally ready to sell it. So uh, we've got to take things a little gently today, and uh, I've got the whole crew because his unit has got some furniture in it, it's got some things stacked around the car, et cetera, and so forth. I told her I'd bring some of the guys. We'd move the stuff out, get the car out, and uh, put the stuff back in. You know, this is a really, really respected builder named Mike that uh, has been here in the neighborhood for a long time. As a matter of fact, the buildings where he's at, uh, I used to rent one of the buildings uh, right there when we were really small, like, you know, 2005, 2007. Uh, I had a little 1,000 foot hole with a bathroom and a sink. So, uh, super nice guy uh, and uh, super good builder. He's one like, good guys truck of the year with a truck he built all by himself every build i've ever seen him do was absolutely flawlessly perfect this one's no different but it does need to get finished up uh it's my understanding that the transmission had some problems so they took it out and they were trying to fix it and i said look i'll just take the car and everything like it is and we'll put it together here but when you see the detail and the quality that mike put into this build you'll understand that this is one hell of a street rod so i'm pretty excited about it uh, but it's also, uh, you know, we can't show all that excitement and be smiling and happy because uh, we're dealing with family matters. And uh, Mike was a really good guy and he was a good friend of mine. So let's go get this done. So there we go. We got it removed out and uh, stabbed the transmission. Of course, we're going to have to take it back out. But uh, I think the, the definition of detail on this car uh, and what Mike Hall has always built is just extremely, extremely good stuff. So I'm pretty stoked on it. Should be a pretty fast car. And uh, now it's time to make the uh, one half mile drive back to the shop. I am removing this power glide transmission out of this very unique and famous Roadster. This was built by Mike Hall, um, the late Mike Hall. So unfortunately there was some work done on this car and it was not able to be finished. So now I'm trying to catch up and we put this transmission in here just to move the car, but it's not ready. I'm gonna have to put the torque converter in here and I just got to double check that it's ready to go in and all the pieces are here and I'm gonna put the torque converter in, turn around, put this transmission back in and then try to uh, finish this project so that we can get to see this car in all its glory and actually take it for a test drive. All right, so I'm expected to just finish up this transmission and put it back in here. But I have heard that the transmission was damaged before because it was not being shifted manually and it needed to be. So I see here, this is a large fluid cooler it was connected to the tranny. So, even though it's not the funnest thing to do, I'm gonna go ahead and remove it and try to flush it out because I'm worried about something being in there, contaminant from the previous transmission failure. And I don't want anything getting back in the new tranny. So this could be a step that saves us a lot of headache. Last thing you want is the old transmission fluid from the last burnout in your new transmission. So right now, um, one, I, one thing I noticed was the reservoir brake lines that go from the reservoir to the master cylinder. Um, they're really tight. Uh, they're, they're a plastic airline fitting, or you know, the fitting is metal, but it's using a plastic line. Um, super tight, so I didn't really like that. So right now, I've unhooked one, and I'm letting it drain um, 
what I'm gonna do is replace these with longer hoses just so they're not stressed. And as you can see, even here, up here, you'll notice how it's kind of pulling at an angle. So I'm going to try to do a better job of keeping all that happy. I don't want it to be so stressed all the time. Yeah, notice a little bit of like varnish leaking out of this fuel line um, or accumulated on it. So I'm just draining the fuel tank now because I mean, we don't know how old the fuel is in this car and there's probably some stuff at the bottom of the tank. So just drain the fuel tank, you know, just one of those things you kind of do when you take on a project that you don't know the history of, or sometimes you can smell it and throw some additive in there. But like I say, since there was some pretty gross stuff coming, leaking right here, I went ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and drain. So what I'm trying to do is get two quarts of fluid in the torque converter now while it's on the bench here. Uh, it's always something you want to do because you definitely don't want to put a transmission in with a dry torque converter. So I've got a half a quart in there now, just waiting on the rest of the stuff to arrive and I will finish up filling this baby. This one's a small one, so you can already see a pretty good level in there, but I'm going to give it time to settle. And like I say, I'm shooting to try to get two quarts in there. I don't know if it's going to take it, but make me feel a lot better if I can get two quarts in there before I stab it onto the transmission. The other important thing, when you're stabbing one of these, everybody probably knows, but you got to get these grooves aligned up with the pump inside there. You, when you fit it on, you'll feel it fit on to the actual spline. You kind of feel it, then you actually want to feel it go in a second time and recess all the way in and snug into these forks here. Very important. Okay, so as you can see, I got the car on the ground. Now I've got to fill the transmission with fluid. Also got to put some gas in this thing because you saw me drain all that out and bleed the brakes. But most importantly, you got to get this transmission fluid in and get this thing running so that I can continue to add transmission fluid after it runs. Uh, I'm not going to just try to dump all of the transmission fluid in it. I'm going to go halfway and try to get the thing to run so then I can add and start checking my level. So this is an exciting moment. Wow. Holy crap. You see where I got to put fuel in this thing at? I am not exactly using the, the service station here. I got to use a five gallon jug, so that's not going to be fun. We're in the hole, Ricky. Okay. Oh my God. Yeah, put it all the way in there, Ricky. <laughs> That's the way I like to do it. <laughs> he didn't even spit on it first. No. So you drain the fuel and put new fuel in. Yes. And do you have it full of tranny fluid yet or are you getting just gonna get it rolling? I should be about two to three quarts shy of being full. Let me I have not checked the oil yet. Wow, before we start it. Beautiful. Should be right on the money. Yeah. Okay. Wheels are off the ground. I don't see any battery power. Okay, let me see if we got a disconnect. Hmm. Back here. Yeah, there's zero power. Yeah. Might want to put a thing to the battery and see.
Yeah, there's like nothing. Yeah, <laughs> nothing. Okay, so I, if I was him, uh, I would think he put the battery behind this box. Well, the gas tank's back there, we know that. So we need a little screwdriver Phillips. Just take a little look. Not a battery. Mm. Pretty nice little fuel cell. Nope, battery. I mean, it wouldn't be hard to find. Uh uh. And there's nowhere for a key. Those are your latches. Mm -hmm. There's no more buttons here but those two, right? Well, the far one over there, that red one, but I pushed it already and it didn't do anything. No, back up just a little bit too easy. That's what's going on. Pull that one over there out. and see if it even has power coming up here. Do it. The Toyota had all those spiders that were attracted to the fuel line they used. They um, got up in there and... Oh, pull in and push it. There's something in between. You're not doing anything to this cable at all. Well, let's get back to moving the battery here. Hey, what'd y'all do? What just happened? Well, I flipped this pocket switch. What the fuck? I ain't a toggle switch. Get the fuck What the fuck? That's just a fan, man. Come on. Well, Dad. Oh, power on. <laughs> You're fucking shitting me. Sometimes you gotta be good from your knees, Wait. I guess. Pull that toggle switch. Pull that toggle switch. Oh, I didn't even see that motherfucker. When you're working on these cars and the guys are looking to try to get it started, find power for it, um, they said they looked under the dash, which I believe them. You know, everybody. Sometimes needs a, a second look because maybe they overlook something. And uh, I just thought if this car was running and dry, it's got to be something stupid and simple. Um, so I flipped the toggle switch and started pushing some buttons under here that they didn't see, and it kind of came to it came to life. Now Richard says that there was something back there that they did, but you never want to give the body man credit for doing the mechanic stuff. You know what I mean? So I think he's covering his boys' butts, but. Uh, Either way, it's running, and that's what we want, so it's a team effort around here, you know. Really, I do it everything myself, I guess. <laughs> We're not rolling, are we? Are wheels rolling? Wheels are rolling. Why? Why are the wheels rolling? What? Why are the wheels rolling? I'm in park. No.
I don't know. All the way up by the front of the throttle. Leverage. I'm in park. Right on the right? No, right now. Now what? Forward. Well, shouldn't you be able to hold it? Is it because there's no weight? Hit the brake real quick. So uh, what we found was that we don't know what we found, but we touched something and uh, it started going. We'll figure it out, but right now, at least we're running. All right, got the brakes bled, got the car down. Now it's time to see what happens. Makes this so fun to drive. It does steer well, but it takes a lot of steering. You know, old school, cool, like big wheel, a lot of turning. It's uh. How's it doing? It's uh, flooding out when I slam on the brakes. We got three floats, three carburetors, maybe or well six, maybe it's just probably just by the time you get it up and run it. Yeah, it's a little loaded, I think, loaded up and. Um, we haven't got the tranny fluid to go down any yet, but it's doing everything it's supposed to. I've felt it go between low and high. Down the brakes. They're good. I can start going on longer trips. Okay. I'll put the hood on this baby and let it be ready for Richard to take it for a drive. Wow. What do you think about this car? What do I think about the car? What do I think about you just kicking our freaking thing of screws? That's shitty. Luckily, there was only the two tiniest little screws that we need to finish this project that you can't get in the mortar. Okay, they're right there. But if they weren't, they wouldn't have a problem. Um, what do I think of the car? It's pretty. It's fiberglass. But, I mean, it's a super nice car. Like, when I drive it, yeah. Would I, like, own it? No, I can't afford it. Would I, would I, like, drive it and go pick up Ricky here and take him to the burger joint? Yeah, of course. He's paying. <laughs> There's no hardware for you to kick on this one.
when Mike Hall's wife reached out to me and said she was ready to get rid of the Roadster, I was super excited about going over there and checking it out. The car had been sitting up on the lift for a little over a year. Uh, the transmission had a little bit of linkage problem, so it had been pulled out. And uh, we didn't really know where we wanted to start, but I got Ricky and his team on it, uh, got the tranny back in there, uh, changed the gasoline because it was old, and got it all fueled up, checked everything, because it's a, it's a little bit of a process when you've got a car that's been sitting for a while, especially something of this nature. You want to make sure that you take your time, you go through it slowly, and what have you. So there you have it, Mike Hall's last masterpiece. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, attention to detail, form, function, you name it. This thing is badass. But at the end of the day, I'm gonna have a little fun with it. And then I'm not in the business of buying and keeping, I'm in the business of buying and selling. So if you've asked your mommy or you've asked your wife or you've talked to the banker and, or you have the cash, give me a call. The car's for sale. If you haven't done any of those things, then you're just a window shopper. And I don't like window shoppers.